Hello everyone! Wait, I think I forgot something. I'll be right back. Right, that's a little better. Let's get started. So, today I wanted to do a full review of Rosetta Stone for Japanese in particular, but this review will for sure apply to all languages, because as you will see in this review, the structure of Rosetta Stone across languages is pretty much the same. So Rosetta Stone is often criticized in the language learning community and instead of just listening to other people's opinion, I wanted to try it myself and I did. And in this video, I will talk about what I thought was good with Rosetta Stone and what I thought was not so good with it. Just to give a bit of context, the general principle behind Rosetta Stone is to teach you languages using context, immersion, without teaching you grammar or using translation. While I thought that the principle of it was quite good before I tried Rosetta Stone, when I actually got around to trying it, I realized that some of the ways in which they implement immersion was a little bit problematic. So what's up behind this award-winning app seven years in a row? Let's find out. When I do my video reviews, I usually like to start with the positives, so let's start with that. What I like the most about Rosetta Stone is the quality of the audio. It's professionally recorded and it allows you to really hear very neatly the pronunciation of the language you are learning. It's not always the case with all language learning resources because sometimes you have to work with a robotic sounding voice, which is super, super weird. Another thing that I like is the variety of exercises. You have to sort of match a text with a picture, sometimes listen to a text and choose the right picture and so on and so forth. And it's gamified, so I find it quite fun to do for, let's say, 10, 15 minutes or even more sometimes. And I like that it's very sort of fun to play with and to practice languages. So in terms of gamifying the app, I think they did well. Another big positive that I found, especially for Japanese, is that it's a great way to practice the reading of kana and kanji, if you already know some of them, otherwise it doesn't really allow you to pick it up, but I will talk about this a bit later. But one of my favorite things with Rosetta Stone is that it allowed me to practice the vocab in context as well as the grammar because what I did before trying Rosetta Stone is that I worked with a textbook, a beginner textbook, and that allowed me to review what I had learned in the textbook. So for that, for practice, for more exposure to the grammar you've learned before, it can be an amazing tool, I think. And last but not least, Rosetta Stone is visually very pleasant. I know it might seem superficial, but when you're trying a language learning resource, if it's pleasant to the eye, it's quite a good thing. And it wasn't actually my last point. My last point is that I like the diversity in the pictures that you see in the uh, software, in the app. It's not just white people like you often see in language textbooks, for example. Uh, you actually see a lot of Asian people, Afro-American people, and I like the diversity because for me, languages are diverse in that way. Now let's talk about the negatives. And unfortunately, there's quite a lot of them. Number one, it seems obvious from what I've seen that across all the courses that they provide, the content is exactly the same. I assume they started with English and then translated everything into all the languages that they offer. And it's a terrible idea because instead of having a content which follows a logical order for the language they're teaching, they decided to just follow the order in which things are introduced in the English version of the course. To give you an example, in English to express formality or be polite with strangers, for example, you don't really need to change the grammar too much compared to the uh, informal uh, version of English. But in Japanese, you have a whole system of politeness, which is called keigo, and it's very complex. And they teach it in the course as if it was as easy as English, um, while really keigo should be taught quite slowly and progressively because it's so complex. Another example where you can see that translation is obvious is by uh, translating the word bye or see you later in English. They use sayonara, which in Japanese is not the equivalent of goodbye or see you later because sayonara is more like farewell, like if someone is going to die or if you are dumping someone and saying goodbye to them for good. A better way of translating goodbye in Japanese would have been something like jane, and that would have been much, much better than sayonara. <laughs> 
My second criticism is about intuitive learning, which is roughly what Rosetta Stone is trying to do. And I actually think it's not intuitive at all. As I said, I'm not against intuitive learning at all, but the problem is that Rosetta Stone tries to give you context and immersion through only pictures, but I don't think pictures are good enough. What you need to really work with context is a video, you know, people moving, interacting, knowing the background between the characters to know and sort of imagine the kind of things that they say based on their relationship and lots of complex things like that. But with a picture with a very bland sort of people, you know, you don't know the people in the picture, it's very difficult sometimes, not always, but often to sort of try to guess what the the text under the picture is trying to say if you don't already know the vocab or the grammar. And speaking of grammar, that brings me to my next point. The way they teach grammar, or in fact, the way they do not teach it, makes it really difficult to acquire the language using only Rosetta Stone. Granted, I do like grammar a lot and I like studying grammar. It's my background. I, I just love grammar. And I can understand that some people might not like it, but I don't understand why Rosetta Stone would just introduce lots of concepts without any explanation. Even in some cases, just a line or two of explanation would have been good enough and sufficient. And they don't do that. So that means that if you don't know anything about Japanese, you have no idea what the mass form is or the te form is. And it's just too difficult with just the context that they provide to sort of work out the meaning of these uh, verb endings. And my last point, still on intuitive learning, is the way they teach the vocab. So sometimes they do it well, you know, if they're teaching the word for a table, a chair, a ball, a dress, etc, etc, they show a picture of the dress and they give you the word and that makes sense, you know, you can associate uh, the word with the picture. But in other cases, it's really not obvious. And it's even worse when they introduce a new noun and a new verb because that's just too much information. I think the best way to uh, do that intuitive learning or learning through context is to have a sentence where only one word is unknown and then you can try to work it out. But if there's too many things you don't know, then it's just too difficult. It, it, it doesn't work, I don't think. Again, I'm not at all against intuitive learning. I just want to repeat that. It's just that, as I said, the way they try to give immersion and context to the sentences doesn't work well enough. There should have been videos or more stories uh, which will allow you to give more context to things. I don't think only pictures is enough. And speaking of pictures, one thing that I thought was a bit weird is that for the Japanese course, there's pictures of Asian people, so that makes sense. But then you see lots of white people, Indian people, and it's not like a problem, but in a way it is because in Japanese culture, you're not likely to see some of the things that you see in the pictures. Um, even the foods are not always kind of relevant to Japanese culture. And I thought that was a bit weird. So it, it could have taught you culture through pictures, but it doesn't really do that because the cultural things that you see in the pictures is not relevant to Japanese culture. Go figure. Conclusion to this review. It might seem that I completely hated Rosetta Stone and actually I didn't. While I think it's a little bit expensive, I did think as well that it was great for false beginners or people that are sort of higher beginner, maybe lower intermediate, because there's a lot of writing, you can read a lot. It's a nice way to practice the writing system in Japanese. So for that reason, it's amazing. It's also nice to hear native pronunciation, that's listening practice for you. There's a bit of speaking involved, which again is nice, but I don't recommend Rosetta Stone for full beginners, especially if the language has a different script, because they don't teach you the script, which I don't know, like, how can you just work out how to read a language like Arabic if you are not taught how to read it? That, that, that I, I don't think that makes sense. <laughs> so that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, maybe consider subscribing, putting some thumbs up, that would be nice. And I will see you in a future video. Bye.